Hello. Hello. Yes, I can hear. Everybody. Yes, yes, I can. Yeah. Manjuba is not here. Manjuba is. Okay. Will be joining anyway. Hello. Let us start now. Hello. Good evening. Good evening to you all. Good evening. Good evening to all the panelists and the participants who have registered already. I am Manoj Barupujari, film critic, journalist, speaking and moderating to this session. And uh, this is the third webinar organized by Fipresi India. As you know, Fipresi stands for Federation International de la Press Cinematographic which was actually established in 1913 in Brussels, Belgium. And now it has its headquarters in Munich, Germany. The proper English name of the organization is uh, International Federation of Film Critics. So in this time of lockdown and COVID-19, this has become a habit worldwide to have webinars, web conversation and everything based on the wave. So uh, 56 third webinar is today. Our subject is Cinemas of Northeast India, a resurgence. Earlier, we had two other webinars. First was about pandemic situation, crisis in the film industry, and role of the government. And the second webinar, we had the topic on new Malayalam cinema its appeal, prospects, and challenges. And because we have selected today's topic as a resurgence of films from <coughs> Northeast India, let me put a few points before starting and start our discussion. You know, Northeastern India has eight number of states, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim, Manipur, Nagaland, Mizoram, Tripura, Meghalaya. And the region has 220 languages and dialects spoken by indigenous people. The region has 46 million people, which is about uh, 4%, less than 4% of the total population of the country. And though it has the geographical area, which is uh, about 8% of the country, 99% of the region is having or sharing international borders. It is surrounded by five different countries, Nepal, Bhutan, China, Myanmar, Bangladesh. The Northeast India is part of indo burmese hotspot and this biological hotspot is second largest in the world. Um, this is a fascinating place as described by many travelers like uh, Hugh and Sang in a medieval period. Uh, to Rahul Sankirtan, from uh, Verier Alvin to Kuswan Singh, everybody finds that from that uh, the it is a area which can be described as a paradise for anthropological study due to its ethnic diversity. There are various barriers, of course, and because of that, Hindi and English are playing as the main lingua franca, and for th this reason. An indigenous language film cannot expect it to be received well by all people in this region. Um, there are just above 100 cinema theaters in this region. Uh, in comparison, it is very low. Say in Kerala, it has about 3.5 crores of people, just a little uh, um, bigger than Assam by population wise but it has 500 cinema theaters and they release about 200 films per year in average. Where in Assam, we have less than 90 numbers of cinema theaters and we release about 20, 22, 23 films, feature films in Assamese language uh, in average per year. The Northeast India has its first film made and released in 1935 by Jyoti Prasad Agarwala. And because of the low level of infrastructure, the maker himself carried a Philips portable projector with him to show the film across the state. 
it was the first political film because the character was taken from medieval assam and it has the meaning which is very near to the political narrative of the time it the character shows the way of non violent struggle which was the prime motto of the uh, freedom struggle of the time and moreover it can be regarded as a first feminist film because of the character and how it is being treated in the film and uh, in the main role there is a women woman character and which was not heard of till then in indian cinema but because of the character and the treatment and the way the film is made not in a theatrical way not in a melodramatic way but in a cinematic acting it was rejected by people at large because of the mindset the, the people were not ready to accept such kind of new beginning new film and that is why the followers of the translator the path breaker could not dare to take the same experiment in film language so assam and for that way uh, north east india had to wait for 40 more years to have a real real realistic film in 1976 it was begun as realistic film in the name of ganga sidani pakhi made by podum borwa and meanwhile in manipur the first film was made in 1972 matamgi manipur or something like that the name was but manipur is known in film world mostly by a maker like oribam chamsharma who is imagining them and ishano has done, <coughs> done very well at international film festival circuit and manipur has a special contribution because uh, when the film makers of the state appealed in the high court to accept their films made in video format for indian panorama and for national film award the government nodded positively and thereafter digital film has came to indian panorama um, platform and to the uh, national film awards ceremony also so after a boom in digital film making there is an upsurge in quality film making in whole the region not only assam and manipur but in other states say in meghalaya in arunachal in manipur uh, in Megha, in mon mizoram and some of the film makers are self taught and some have film uh, institute background but suddenly in last 6 7 years there is a new breed of film makers taking all by surprise they are full of self confidence i would say full of self conviction the government because of the government the party and lack of public support they they dare actually to reclaim a space in creative aesthetically and philosophically charged world of cinema in their own effort in their own way government at uh, support is not totally absent because funding is made available though very irregularly but government funded films fail at box office and also uh, seen as failing to make a real impact at film festival outlet rather individually these film makers have made uh, the impact at the international and national level for example the geo mummy festival held every year in mumbai three years in a row in 2016 17 the golden gateway award given to a film from india was won by films from north east india there is another film maker who has got um, a very prestigious award in busan film festival there is some other who has his script has been accepted for uh, in the asia pacific script lab and for the first time an assamese film was selected for the um, as an indian entry for oscar nomination so today we will look into the nitty gritty of this silent revolution i would say taking place in the northeastern states of india we call it resurgence and so uh, now let me introduce our panelists for today's webinar um we have among us today monju gora who is a short story writer in assamese and a film director her debut feature film boyhood 
made in 1999 won the best asian film award at dhaka international film festival and a national level award given to a first time director the golapuri srinivas award she has made 11 feature films till date along with uh, many documentaries and six of her feature films have won each of the kamal at the national film awards among various positions she held a notable one was the chairperson of the oscar screening committee under the film federation of india in, 19, in 2012 monju bora has served as jury member of national film awards and as member of indian panorama selection committee several times and she was given the satyajit ray memorial award by the asian film foundation mumbai in 2012 and conferred the legend of indian cinema recognition at the golden jubilee of international film festival of india i welcome monju bora today um now i welcome a national award winning film critic from manipur magasandra kumbam uh he was a recipient of sarna kamal for film criticism at the national film awards 2015 a member of kritasi india he is the president of film society of manipur which is incidentally the third oldest film society in northeast india Kungbom has been regularly writing on cinema in leading newspapers of Manipur and East in India, the online journal of Press India. He did his post graduation in journalism from Benares Hindu University in 1979 before joining government services. In 1985, he attended the film appreciation course at the FTII, Pune. He has retired from service as the director of the Information Public Relations Department of Manipur in 2018. is welcome maxima kumbha now i would like to introduce but known to everybody many people around the world who is a filmmaker from manipur is a hawam pavan kumar who studied film making at the satyajit ray film and television institute kolkata best known for his documentary af spa 1958 that examined the facts of the armed forces special powers act in manipur hawam pavan kumar is one of the very few filmmakers who have displayed comprehensive knowledge and mastery in both documentary and fiction features his documentary af spa 1958 won several awards including the fifrasi and jury prize at the mumbai international film festival of 2006 and his another well known documentary film song also titled floating life won accolades in some of the well known international film festival his w feature film loktok lerambe was premiered at asian new current section of the busan international film festival 2017 and showcased in forum section at berlin the same year um it has won the film loktok lerambe Uh, also titled as lady of the lake won 16 awards including one at the asia pacific screen awards brisbane in 2017 which was are at mumbai film festival and rajat kamal for the best environment film at the nfa now i introduce uh, bitupon borbora is a well known film critic nationally and internationally he is a senior journalist writer and working with the Assam Tribune group of newspapers from the very outset he took film criticism seriously in 1990 he was the only regular columnist on cinema in Assam newspaper he received the state award for best film critic in 2015 besides he is a short story writer already having four anthologies the first one winning a prestigious literary award in 1999 Bitupon Borora is a senior member of the press and served as jury member in Mumbai and Bangalore International Film Festival and as a major overseas film festival like Cannes, Moscow, Busan and Cairo. He is a founder of festival director of Cine Asa Guwahati International Film Festival which has been held since 2009. Now I introduce uh, Pranjal Bora our panelist by profession who is an educationist for 12 years running he is an associate professor of the department of english at a premier government college in sipsagar district of upper assam he is known as a translator of creative literature and a film society activist but he is prominent as film critic 
having won best critic prizes at the state film awards 2016 and prague cinema awards 2017 he has been contributing regularly to different outlets and published one collection of articles in cinema ranjul roy attended the film appreciation course at the film and television institute of india pune and he is a life member of national film archive of india pune he is doing doctoral research now on films and has, has written a, a number of documentary scripts ranjul roy is, is a research person at several seminars workshops and appreciation courses and he is spearheading film literacy throughout the time so uh, I have come to the end of introduction to our panelists, and now I start with uh, Amonjo Bora. And um, before going to the details of the historical context on the subject of our webinar today, I would like to have a fair picture of the ground realities that challenges filmmakers. And Amonjo Bora has a vast practical knowledge in it. She has made films in various languages and dialects of the region. Assam is Bodo, Nising, Pangsingpa, and explored geographical locations in remote places in Assam, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh, particularly. So, having seen the realities, how tough it is, and how rewarding of making films in Northeast, uh, would you share some experience that you had, which are of immense value? I'm sure, Manjula. Ah, uh, yes, I always tell. Uh, to my people, uh, to the you know, world, that the strength of my filmmaking or the lifeline of my filmmaking is my people and my land. That is the northeastern region of the country. Without these people, without this region, I cannot make films. I remember once in a press meet, international press meet, uh, held in Goa, if he. Uh, I was uh, describing myself as a filmmaker from Northeast, and I told them that uh, I make Northeastern films. Then some of them, some of the reporters, journalists, uh, they objected. Can you, uh, how can you tell that your film is Northeastern film? Why you are giving a geographical status to your film? Then I said, see, I live in this uh, region of in this region of the country. I live with these people. Where more than 200 people are there, they have their own culture, they have their own linguistic uh, existence, they have their own, uh, you know, political, socio-political, economic, and linguistic and cultural problems for their existence. They always struggle, and without their story, I cannot make any film. Uh, so that way, till now, I have made films in different dialects. Uh, initially, I started with the main uh, stream, main main. Um, mainstream Assamese language. Later on, I started making films in Boru, in Missing. Then my last film was made in Pangshanpa. That is a language spoken, that is a dialect spoken in the easternmost, uh, that international border of the country, that is Jemitang. Uh, it is 100 kilometers away, uh, away from, I mean, uh, from, uh, from Tawang. So when I'm talking about my people, my land, there are some difficulties, but it is not an easy task to make films in this region. Yes, they are very cooperative. They, are, they cooperate like anything. When I made a film in Bobo language, it was uh, not very far. The place was very beautiful. Good. Uh, two hours away from Guwahati city. So I was thinking initially that this time my at least location is so uh, you know nearby, so it will be a very comfortable uh, place to shoot and keep my uh, crew members and all. But it was not there. It was very difficult, in fact, because when I went for Reiki, I was finding that everybody was uh, uh, willing to help me during my shooting time, and they have showed me some places where I can keep the uh, you know crew members and all. Though it was very difficult to get some guest house. There are none actually. There was only one guest house, government guest house, and it was very difficult to get rooms there. So I had to, uh, you know, make ready one school, uh, one school, uh, one school premises for the people to stay there. Some makeshift arrangement for the toilets and all. And for me, there was a small Hanuman Mandir, small room. I had to stay there for one long, one full month. 
So these are the initial problems, but my people, my crew, crew members knew that Baidu has come to this place to make a very realistic film, so let us uh, cooperate with her. So it was very good initially. But when I started my shooting there, then I came to know slowly that this area is totally, uh, I mean, is full of insurgents. All the villages, the boys from the villages uh, nearby where I was shooting, they either one or two at least uh, from their locality, from their, you know, uh, from their village. Some are there in the insurgents, um, this thing. So that army army personnel, one day he came to came to our location after two days or three days of shooting. So he came and he was very worried. He said, how can you uh, dare to shoot here? These people, you have, you do not know how, what they are. You will be attacked at any time. But I was without any, I mean, any police help or any security, I was shooting. I never take any police uh, security and all while I go to the interiors. And the, uh, those people are my always, you know, they look after me, the local people. But that army major was so uh, uh, concerned about my and my team security. So he was always there to help me. So he has provided me all the vehicles, all the armed forces, all the weapons, which were required for the film. For the sto because story was such, but suddenly something happened. There were there was four days left uh, to finish my shoot. Then I came to know he rang me up from somewhere that some uh, you know some uh, incident took place, some encounter. So I had to vacate the place immediately because he was not there to help me out. So I had to pack up suddenly and came back. I could not go there again. Four five sequences were le left actually. I could not finish. Later on also, I could not go and arrange those shooting. So these are the problems, practical problems when you shoot in the interiors because these parties like that. You do not know how what will come at what point of. I mean, from anywhere it may come. That was the insurgent problem. And my second film in other dialect, it was missing. It was month of July in the at uh, in Chipsagar district, uh, Dishang Mok. The Brahmaputra was full of water, and uh, um, suddenly flood came, and my camp was totally, you know, uh, I mean, totally covered by water, and I did not know where to keep my people. So it was in such a uh, situation. There was a small house I hired my camera and my crew members from Delhi, uh, from sorry, from Bombay. I had to keep them in a small house. And other people, other crew members were in a school, which was now full of water. So this flood situation was such during the month of July. In uh, the Brahmaputra was full of water. The undercurrent, you know about Brahmaputra. So these are again that natural challenge I had to cope up. So that was another experience. Then other experience, the, my last film, Pangshenpa. And you cannot imagine in the month of Mars uh, that uh, you know Sela Pass was full of. Uh, a snow. It was four feet, five feet, six feet like that. That time, that year, it was full of snow. And the micro members, I think 10, 12 vehicles got stuck in that area. And army had to help, but they could not, uh, I mean, it took four days to reach the destination, to reach the uh, location. Because otherwise, it takes three days. But that time, due to the heavy snowfall, they had to come back to Bombila again. Then again, uh, they had to start with the help of army. They could reach the that uh, reach the location. That way, I lost four or five days, and you know financially how we lose every day. So it was a very tough uh, situation for me. And there again, that uh, accommodation. There was no, there is no uh, infrastructure. Not to talk about film shooting, but for uh, normal people even, if you go there, there is not a single place to stay. So we had to clean up some old abandoned offices, which were under during those Assam government, Assam days. But now my uh, Arunachal has their own setup. Those rickety houses we had to clean up, and uh, all the bedrooms and all I had to carry from Guwahati for 36 crew members, 36 bedrooms I had to carry from Guwahati. Just imagine the condition. And no fuel, no hospital, and nothing is there. So in that uh, condition, in the border, international border, we had to stay there for more than 30 days. And uh, my camera was on for 29 days, I think. And food was different, fuel was different. And it was a Buddhist area. And there was no non veg food available. My crew members were very upset because they always wanted to have some non veg 
item. So they have to be content with vegetarian food. So those are the things that uh, practical, I mean, problems you face, uh, I mean, working in those areas. And artists, yes, those kind of artists, when you decide to work in a different dialect, you cannot expect that some professional artists you can carry from Guwahati with you and they will act. It is not possible. So I had to depend on the local people. I had to spot some local faces, bring them, uh, do some workshop, teach them. Those people, they do not even know how to read and write. So those people have to follow the dialects. I had my, of course, a language assistant and she or he will uh, read it out. The dialogues they will memorize and that way they deliver the dialogues in front of camera. I mean, somehow I found them very good because they are not conscious at all. Once they know their job, once they know their character, they will not even get nervous. They will deliver it so naturally. And I am so happy if you have seen uh, in the land of poisoned women, those artists were so natural and delivered, I mean, uh, portrayed their character so well. I'm so happy with them. And it was sing sound because I cannot bring them down to Guwahati for dubbing and they won't be able to dub you in the same dialogues. So that was a very difficult proposition for me financially. But still, I could not take any risks. I had to do sing sound for the first time in my film. So these are the practical problems while you make such films. If you want to make a film in original language and original place, then you have to cope up with all kinds of difficulties. OK, thank you. Very well spoken about the difficulties uh, in shooting a film in the hilly, remote areas of Northeast India. And uh, But uh, to assess and evaluate what is understood as a kind of recharging of cinema of Northeast India states, including hills and plains, there are few other things uh, which can be shared by uh, Bitupon Barbara, I think, who is a connoisseur of cinema and religious studies. So I asked Bitupon Barbara to go into the details of the nitty gritty and variety of films made in this region. Uh, what has actually already spoken about the resurgence of Northeastern cinema, uh, despite which I will also endeavor to focus on certain issues issues which have been noticed in Northeastern cinema in recent days. Earlier in the entire Northeastern region, we had about eight states, and out of which only Manipur and Assam was a filmmaking or film producing state. And Monip uh, Assam was the most vibrant in those days, and Manipur joined us in le le later, much later, I guess. So, as Manu stated earlier, the first military film is uh, Matangi Maniku. Uh, then, in Assam, as you know, that Sushad Agarwala started the first Assamese film in 1935. So, this is the beginning of both states' cinema history. And as uh, earlier, Manipur, uh, we, as we know, only Arivam Shamsama was the was a renowned filmmaker whose film had been screened in Kaaf Khan Festival as, as well in 1990. Uh, the film is Ishanu, and it, it was screened in Khan Shatrin in the Country Regard sector. So suddenly, in entire northeastern region, in last 10 years, uh, if I, I mean, uh, cover the whole decade, there's a huge lot of filmmakers coming up in almost every state, be it Nagaland, be it Onasan Pradesh, be it Sikkim, be it Meghalaya also. Even in places like uh, Nagaland or Meghalaya where filmmaking history was almost uh, non-existent again. So in uh, Manipur, then new breed of filmmakers like Hari, Hariba, uh, Haubam Paban Kumar came, the other guys uh, 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 like uh, Sanju, whose name is very difficult to pronounce, Sanju, uh, I think, what is his name? Sanju Bashas, Pati Mayam, I guess. Bashas Pati Mayam. Pati Mayam, uh, then Oinam Doran has also come. Then, and as you know, Manipur is a state. I think even incorporated into Assam, the digital filmmaking 
the process is uh, the reason film making activities are very very vibrant when i was uh, a member of sensu uh, uh, board here i am noticed that we see almost regularly in every sitting about 10 12 digital film those that are being produced in monico so even in entire lotusan state monico is the only place where they make lot of lot of digital clips all genre there are many films i mean those are very violent kind of very graphical violence they include also but then there are many films where we can see the i mean the aesthetic quality of very final uh final type into that haribam tariki how about one is the one this is an example whose film has already traveled many international film festivals and also his documents are also i mean very acclaimed in across the globe so let me i mean touch the name of clip of few of the filmmakers those that are emerging in almost every state of north is in sikkim is it is tribeni rai and then sering ajay kumar pradhan and dipankar ratna shaikha and abhishek chatri in ornasal pradesh the sanjay sange darji जिनल क्वालिटी finesse and everything so he is <coughs> one of the very uh, renowned filmmaker coming out from onasal pradesh besides who is there is another senior filmmaker who has already made eight features his name is darje a thagun and there is another young filmmaker who is also i mean active in organizing film festivals as well as citing his runs a film society his name is modi riba in nagaland as you know this Kevin Sobe is one, and Sophie Lasuk is another filmmaker. But in Nagaland, in recent times, many young filmmakers, those uh, are making mostly documentary films, are also coming up. And I have uh, seen a very interesting animation filmmaker made by Naga youth sometime back in International Film Festival of India as well. <clears throat> so they are into all of the, all the genres and they are making interesting films. I know again I I have um, I remember watching a film on bee hive uh, bee I mean uh, breeding in uh, hill areas uh, that was also from Nagaland. Then you know Meghalaya in recent times two of the young filmmakers not only they made very interesting films but also already they have made huge name in entire globe. the one name that comes to mind is prodip kurba his first film onta itself was a very noticeable film then his recent film ledu is i mean acclaimed almost across the globe then the another young filmmaker damni samma he is also a pass out from srfti is the debu fisher the mama also doing very well in across the uh, international arena and many of the film festivals in his film as well then there is another filmmaker from meghalaya his name is semi kangtiang he is also making very interesting films in manipur as you know i have told and monoj also spoken about aribam sham sharma have what pavan kumar with lot of prambi is i mean doing very fine who is also won in mami international film festival then there is another filmmaker i know personally also the makhon lal mumbasa then sanju i told you he also my i mean batchmate in uh, fti i well we are doing our film appreciation course in 1986 then another the oinam darren is a recent young film maker he is also very promising in manipur and there is another very interesting film maker he is emerging in a state called mizoram where i mean you will be surprised that there is no film culture as such there is no cinema hall but he has made a very interesting film uh, at least 4 or 5 years back the kwanglo grand which has been doing very well that was very popular across the 
uh, civil circuit as well as popular uh, catered to popular taste as well and that is actually a very interesting historical film about miju i mean society itself so his name is mafuya mafuya songtho he is a self taught uh, film maker and he is i think very promising only thing is that he is i mean facing lot of constraint to get fund for his kind of film he wanted to make that is the problem because the film mostly his audience love to see the hollywood kind of movie action packed movie and he is i mean almost helpless as to how to make a quality film but those who have watched hanglong one they can see that his aesthetic sense is very refined and he can make great films in assam uh, as you know jan after janubura many film makers emerged like sanjeev hazrika bidut chakraborty manju bora uh, then gobi sharma borwa and there after came the new breed of film makers rima das whose film i do know the village doctor and other film makers already doing very good across international film festivals <coughs> this rima das village doctor also backed the tarnakamal in 2018 then there are another other other film makers those that are emerging in assam is like football barbu there was earlier a colleague of Kripreski here and he is now making films. His first film is has backed a national award for best children film issue. Then Deep Chaudhary also he backed a Indira Gandhi award for best debut film for Priya. Then Suros Dwara Orang also backed a, a, a Rajat Kamal for a best Rafa film. <coughs> Then Hamonto Das his Othello also backed Rajat Kamal for best Assamese film. Another guy, Manjul Borua, is is Kanin and Antorin. Both are doing fine. Then Joy Singh Joy Dohotia Handu also bag a very interesting award in Jio Mami Festival. Uh, then Konkon Deka is also a emerging filmmaker. He is a very made a very brave film sometime back, two three years back. The Beautiful Lives. It's about it's about a I mean physically disabled person who suffered. a uh, previous injury in a bomb blast in ganeshgiri of guwahati city and uh, basically he covers the life after the agony that the protagonist faces uh, in her, his later life then another young filmmaker bhaskar hazrika is kothanadi and amish both are doing very fine kothanadi back national award amish also back many interesting uh, awards across the india and there are many other filmmakers like julan krishna mohanto the kenny bosomotari they are also doing very fine they are very promising in that sense in this scenario this is very noticeable that we have got lot of constraints in north eastern states you know in assam also <coughs> we have uh, the film i mean cinema halls are dwindling on every day now i, I don't know what will be the scenario after this um, corona uh this is for go goes but i think only now assam i guess only 60 film uh, cinema halls are almost i mean do the active but there are many states like manipur also there is no cinema hall in onasal <coughs> pradesh no cinema hall in nagaland i mean there are few cinema halls in dimapur but otherwise the state, the madhu market their cinema in assam it is very difficult because we have no market as such for our kind of cinema the kind of cinema the aesthetically sound cinema our filmmakers the uh, look for look out for making uh, this is why i think the ott platform has come as a boon and i think our filmmakers will explore these means to continue with making their quality films recently from government side in assam as well as manipur the governments are coming forward to help our film makers uh, may, maybe i will touch on that aspect on later thank you friends thank you vidupan you spoke very well about the total picture in film making of the region and now i invite megasandra kongbam uh, who is at the forefront of film society movement 
and also in dissemination of them education in Manipur. Uh, certainly, you are in a position of observing and analyzing the development of vibrant immigrant scenario in your place. And so, uh, how do you judge or see the evolving digital film culture in Manipur? Right. Sorry. We will give a picture of uh, this Manipurian tradition. <coughs> Uh, the legacy of Manipur cinema had a uh, struggle in past with commitment to the modern era of these <coughs> challenges and uh, development. When uh, Indian cinema was six decades old, Manipur cinema was born in the year 1972 on 9th April. The director is uh, Devakumar Bose and the film is Matangi Manipur. At the time, we engaged with technicians and the equipment from the Kolkata, even the director too. And with the, this uh, collective efforts of those Manipuris who were prominent in the field of this art and culture, theater, literature, and music, they made a great film. And uh, that film was got the president's silver medal in the 20th National Film Awards and it does receive, when Pushima received the national recognition just when it was born. In a decade, when Pushima made the nation's pride and got the national recognition when even some Sharma's imagining camp, my son, my pieces, had the Grand Prix in the competition of internet and competition section of the Festival of Three Continents in Nantes in the year 1982. Thus, Imai became the first and only Indian film to receive the top prize in the Khan in the Nantes. The <coughs> film travel around the globe, participating in many major festivals. Then after that, Aribo Sam Sharma again, his film Sano, chosen one, produced in the year 1990, was the official selection of uncertain regard of the Khan's International Film Festival in 1991 and participated in many major international festivals. Thus, it proved the potentiality of Manipur cinema in the international arena. In the span of 25 years of Manipur cinema, that is up to 1997, Manipur produced only 28 feature films. Out of the 28 feature films, nine films had won the national awards. We suppose that every third Film produced in Manipur had no understanding award. And in the beginning, SN San, then Arivan Tham Sarma, Jishi Tombra, M. Nilamani Singh, L. Bankar Sarma, M. A. Singh, FT I. I. Gertwe, G. Narayan Sarma, K. Hol Sarma, and Sankai Gautambi were the top bearer of the Manipuri cinema. The second generation of the Manipuri cinema started in the year. 1990. During the period, Manipur cinema had its own technicians, equipment for film production, and uh, only the processing part was done outside Manipur. A group of talented, energetic filmmakers, including R.K. Kipa, Okian Amaksam, El Sudhakanta, Tandam Samacharan, Chan Hisham, Vishwamitra, Kishokumar, M.P. Jit, Thangambat Thugamba, Makhumani Mongsawa, K. Bimol Sharma became prominent in the second generation. In the period of 1990s and the end, early part of 2000s was the glorious period of Manipuri cinema for its commercially viable. Manipuri audience could also see at least a new Manipuri film every year. And in and end of the years 2001 and 2002 had achieved production of seven films each. The state government earned more than rupees one crore per year as revenue from the entertainment tax from around 60 cinema holes in the state. Thus, Manipur became the leading state producing films in Tibet over language in India, where the films are mainly made in three major language groups, namely Indo Aryan, Dravidian, and Tibet over languages. When the event of the cable TV and the video led to the closure of the cinema holes, in India, in the latter part of 1980s, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting constituted a high power committee on the problems of film industries on 14 
February 1989, and the 20 recommendations continue to state government were aimed to every step for implementation. Indian film industry, being the ninth biggest industry in India, the government of India had announced film as industry in the on 10 March 1998. The then Union Minister Sushma Swaraj also wrote to the Chief Minister of Manipur in a letter dated 28 March 1998 for recognition of film as industry. The then film bodies like all Manipur Film Producer Association, the Artists and Technician Association Manipur had demanded implementation of the recognition of the government of India as well as recognition of the film as industry in Manipur. The state government did not take up any positive action. Meanwhile, Manipur cinema met a major crisis in the education sector in 2000. On 3rd September 2000, a militant group had proposed a blanket ban of screening his films in cinema halls and uh, video parlors against the alleged Australian death of this member in the hands of the army. The cinema halls which were survived on Bollywood movies were closed one after another. The state government did not take up any appropriate measure for survival of cinema in the state. Had there been the timely implementation of the recommendation of the government of India, timely announcement of film as industry in the state, timely announcement of state film policy, the crisis in Manipur cinema would not happen. Meanwhile, in violation, of the Manipur Cinematograph Rules 1955 as well as against the recommendations of the government of India for the survival of the, this film industry, the state government had allowed the screening of the video films certified by the certain board of film certification in the cinema halls with effect from May 2002 as an interim measure, which is not done uh, for survival of the cinema halls. This practice of screening video films in the theaters, which is not done anywhere in the country, is known as the digital film culture in Manipur. This is misnomer. Neither the theaters equipped, were equipped with digital technology, nor the films shown in the theater were certified by CBFC as digital. Consequently, now there is no any digital cinema hall. That is the cinema hall equipped with uh, digital technology in this step, except that of state run Manipur State Film Development Society auditorium. This is the head of Manipur film industry. Despite this hurdle, filmmaker like Hobam Pavan Kumar, SRFTI graduate, my Paksana Horumbam, Dr. Bhupen Hazarka Film Institute graduate, Vinam Gautam, Ajit Tumnam, and others involved in the third generation. Hobam Pavan Kumar's Loktak Lairambi met in 2016, became the first digital film certified by the CPFC, which won the National Award, as well as the Golden Gateway in the Joe Mami Mumbai Festival. The film had its world premiere in Pakistan and the travel around the globe. As for CBSC, there was no production of Manipur film in the year 2017. The year 2018 witnessed three digital films, of which Magi Matambaka, directed by Dr. Makumani Moskhaga, met its entry in Bangalore International Film Festival and the third ISM Film Festival in Mumbai. The year 2019 had witnessed more than 10 digital films gaining its momentum in the production sector. The film Andam Amada, directed by Oinam Gautam, had its world premiere in the Dhaka International Film Festival 2020 and also screened at the third ISM Film Festival. Akwesibo Kanano, directed by Ajit Yumna, participated in the Jaipur International Film Festival 2020. In the span of five decades, Manipur cinema backed 38 national film awards, 17 in feature films, 18 in non feature films, and three in writing on cinema, bearing the torch of the new era of Manipur cinema by the, this present generation. The, this film journey is still goes on. This is the trip itself of the Manipur film tradition leading to present scenario. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kumbam. You have given a very vivid picture of Manipur film scene. Uh, now we will hear Haobam Paban Kumar, who is distinguished by his powerful presentation of harsh realities, 
while he tries to mingle fiction and documentary styles creatively. Hawa Moil, I hope, throw some light on the reasons and the driving force behind his uh, cinematic efforts. Hawa Moil. Uh, thank you, Manojda. Can you hear me? Welcome. Yeah, uh, yeah, hearing you. It's OK. OK. Uh, Manojda, uh, coming to your uh, uh, question, uh, I think, uh, you know, documentary comes very naturally to me. You know, I think uh, that documentary comes really naturally to, I think, everybody in this region who comes from this region. Uh, so, you know, uh, though initially, you know, uh, you know, I, I never knew what documentary was when, when I came into f the film. It was all, all about feature films. But then as, as I entered the filmmaking world, as I went for studies, you know, uh, I, I realized the importance of documentaries and, and you know, I, so, you know, and automatically coming from this reason, you know, I, you know, there are so many problems in this reason. When I started making films, it was in, uh, in the year 2000, I think, 2000, 2000, uh, yeah, around that time, I started assisting Aribamji and, you know, I started uh, doing documentaries. So it was about telling stories about myself and, I had consciously made this decision, you know, uh, when I came out of the institute to, you know, uh, to do something, something different also, because Aribam was a big name that time. And, you know, whenever someone does anything in Manipur, you know, so it, people will start comparing it with him. And then, you know, I started looking at myself to you know, know myself, what is, what is my background and, you know, what kind of films should I make? And so documentaries came naturally to me. And it, it was also about knowing Manipur, the harsh realities of Manipur. So, so uh, I, when I made AFSP in 1958 and it, when it was screened in uh, uh, Mumbai International Film Festival, uh, a lot of people came to me and said, you know, this is the first time that we are actually seeing, uh, you know, the, the problem of notice in cinema for the first time. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, so so it was. It was. I think it was this uh, reality that which I carried forward. And uh, uh, when I made my first fiction feature film, uh, Lady of the Lake, uh, being being having a documentary background, and you know, always uh, looking for a realistic kind of approach, and also being a film student, I I want to play around with the form, you know. Uh, I'm always fascinated by uh, cinematic languages, how to tell stories differently. That's why probably why I said documentary comes to me naturally is uh, documentary, you know, uh, for well, you are doing, when we are doing a documentary, you know, every subject decides how to go about it, you know, the treatment, you know. So the documentary that way is quite interesting. I mean, when I'm doing another film, so the subject decides what kind of narrative it should, you know, take. So it's it's not like fiction where you know there there is so much limitation. But I wanted to bring that element to into fiction also. That's why when I did when I planned my feature film, first feature film, I wanted to do it the way I have been doing documentaries, wow. and also in a very cinematic way, you know, using the language of cinema. So probably that's why. Uh, and 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 plus, you know, the, I can never escape the harsh reality of uh, this region. And uh, uh, you know, when when I did my first fiction film, it was also about the 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 developmental activities happening in 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 North East India right now. Uh, also, you know. Uh, Today, uh, I, I was I was editing. Uh, you know, I'm doing a documentary on Aribam Sham Sharma. So I was uh, looking at his. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I had done the final cut. So I was looking at it again, and we had this uh, webinar. Uh, so you know, uh, one thing which I really like about Aribam nowadays, we really talk about uh, the, you know blending of documentary and fiction as a modern approach a lot of people talk about that and when i saw the footages of uh, isano when i was going to the footages of isano i think aribamji has done that long time back in isano you know so uh, but yeah yeah uh, coming back to my my vision of uh, fiction and non-fiction is 
uh, I think uh, it's 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 uh, the way people see it. I mean, uh, for me, it's it's both both the ways. I it's it's a, it's a very realistic approach that I always take when when I do a fiction or either a fiction or a nonfiction. But as I said earlier, what attracts me to documentary is you know the kind of treatment. You know, in fiction there is a lot of limitation while doing the treatment of a film. So caring for what the uh, the things that I have been doing in documentary. You know, every every film I have done, every documentary that I have done, I, I the, the the approach has been very different. AFSP uh, AFSP nineteen fifty eight I think was a very different kind of film. Mr. India was a very different kind of film. Uh, and when I made uh, the first leap on the uh, cinematic journey of uh, uh, Manipuri cinema, uh, making of the first Manipuri film, uh, it was it was also, you know, so, so you know, uh, these kind of approaches, so when I reach my uh, destination, I mean, when I reached, when I was planning to do my fiction film, uh, Lady of the Lake, what happened was I went to the lake to do the recce of my feature film. So that time I realized that uh, I have to really, you know, I have to really do uh, a proper research. So instead of making a feature film, I made a documentary before that. And that is uh, Fumsun or Floating Life. It took me three years. So, you know, actually I, I, uh, my feature film got delayed for three years because I was doing the documentary, but it really helped uh, because because of my approach. I mean, I wanted real people to act in the film and I wanted real locations. And uh, so what happened was, so finally when I made the feature film, uh, the, uh, the journey that I took as a documentary filmmaker, that really helped, you know, I won the confidence of the uh, lo local people there and uh, they were ready for the fiction. I mean, they, they were already, you can say that they were already in front of the camera. And so when I shot my feature film, it was very, you know, it became, it became very natural for, for them. And they were not bothered about the camera at all. Uh, and, and also, you know, technically what I did was, you know, usually when you do a documentary, you uh, work with a very small crew. Right. So even for my feature film also, I continued that pattern. And uh, so we had, I think, hardly around five people during the whole, uh, 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 during the whole shoot. And it was in the middle of the lake. Uh, I think uh, that that's, that's what it is, uh, Manuza. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, thank you, Havam, uh, for your uh, <clears throat> very elaborate views on your style of making. Uh, now I will. Uh, we will hear Pranjal Vora, who has been keenly observing recent trends in world cinema and regional cinema as well. As example, I would say he has talked about films from Meghalaya, uh, films by Pradeep Kurba, Dominic Sangma, who have addressed issues like insurgency, gender, struggle of lower classes, loneliness through the language of cinema with deep aesthetic meaning and philosophical tone. Uh, thank you, Monosda. I just hope I am audible to you because Come my here. video yes. seems to be a little bit problematic. No, am we I are hearing you perfectly. Yes, uh, audible. Uh, thank you, Monosda. Uh, well, uh, before proceeding further, I think it is imperative on my part to make some sort of general observations about what these prodigious filmmakers from Northeast are exactly going about, the kind of narratives they are sending out, uh, the, the, the qualities they epitomize, and so on. Uh, so here are some of my observations. Uh, most of these uh, prodigious filmmakers, uh, you know, have come up with uh, film narratives, which are rich, diverse, and often experimental cinematic narratives in a structure and content. I'm, I'm sure you would hardly disagree with me. Uh, then, of course, the socio-political, economic, and cultural milieus often creep into the narratives as a readily tangible lead motive. Personally, personally, in all in all of their films, you, you find this tendency at varying degrees. And of course, this is very promising and uh, I would love to share with you and I'm sure you'll be at one with me. Uh, personally, all of them have uh, a well-defined film sense and a fairly well-defined film perspective, which is pretty crucial. 
and and wow. then uh, very often uh, they have an innovative and tight sense of scripting that paves the way for highly suggestive storytelling in an acceptable film language. I own said the film language they use is always excellent, but it is always expected, ex expect, ac acceptable and absolutely no doubt about it. Then, of course, all of them seem to have a pension, seem to have an intent for acquisition of good command over the film aesthetics and language. And as a result, what we find in their films, uh, very often suggestive, ev evocative cinematography, content and ess essence driven editing techniques, uh, spiffy and meaningful sound design, quality acting, of course. Uh, these are some of the uh, trademarks, hallmarks that are so prominent in their narratives. Uh, then, of course, a readily palpable tendency to weave a cinematic narrative uh, which is minimalist in gimmicks, but rich in cinematic beauty. Uh, then uh, a conscious endeavor to bring in a flavor of fusion cinema to be commercially viable at times. It doesn't apply to all the filmmakers, but there are there are certain examples. For example, you can talk about the films of Pradeep Kurba, except the last one, then even Bhaskar Hazurka's films, uh, and him Zudi Talukdar's film, they try to bring in some sort of a teens of, you know, fuse of cinema. Uh, then last but not the least, uh, this is my observation. Most of them seem to show allegiance to independent film moment in their own characteristic ways. I won't say it. They are copying anybody. They are emulating anybody. They are following somebody's footprints. Uh, they, are, they are curious enough. They are intelligent enough. They are talented enough to indigenize their staffs, their perspectives, their film sense. And precisely, uh, when we talk about uh, the contemporary Northeastern cinema, we talk about these particular qualities. And of course, uh, if, I, if I focus on the cinema of Meghaloi, the Christian cinema of Meghaloya, Meghaloya also epitomizes this particular scenario. Um, well, coming back to what I'm supposed to share with you today, uh, probably after Bobon House, Lady of the Lake, and Rima Das's Village Rockstars, uh, the two other films which have taken the semantic world by storm are paradoxically, interestingly, and should I say, pleasingly from the cinema of Meghaloi. Yes, you were right. I am talking about two films. Uh, the first by Mama by Dominic Sangma and Ludo by Pradeep Kurba. Uh, see, uh, when, when we talk about uh, the cinematic scenario, cinematic domain in, in the cinema uh, in, the, in Meghaloi, uh, the, the, the things that or the, rather the general observations that I have made aptly and tangibly apply to their cinematic prowess, cinematic creations. For example, Pradeep's recent film, Ludo, which has made us proud uh, by grabbing a number of international accolades and grabbing a lot of accolades from both critics and connoisseurs, is a very interesting film. It's a very well-knit, reflectively made film uh, based on the lives uh, of, of, of Meghaloya, Silong especially, against the backdrop of Ludo, uh, which, is a, which is a famous marketplace uh, ah. popularly known as Bora Bozar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then, then uh, what about the, what about the, what about the essence of this a film like uh, Ludo? Uh, it is a deceptively simple film. It's a deceptively simple film which amalgamates, which juxtaposes in itself a number of mutually connected stories uh, from the lives of characters who inhabit that particular place, uh, the hopes and aspirations of their life, their modus vivendis, uh, the many subtle challenges they have to encounter in their life. And all these are depicted in such a beautifully woven and beautifully neat cinematic narrative. And uh, then again, the kind of aesthetics that he used in that particular film, uh, the, 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 the narrow lens, uh, the, the noisy atmosphere of that particular marketplace are so beautifully captured. I mean, uh, it, it must have been a formidable silence for the filmmaker to capture the hues of that particular bustling market. And also uh, the, the beauty of sing sound, 
which is being so beautifully, so effectively used that particular film. I, 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 what I'm trying to impress upon you, I'm trying to impress upon you the kind of beauty, the kind of cinematic prose that is so prominent in the works of these particular filmmakers, Pradeep Kurba, uh, Dominic Sangma. Dominic Sangma, for example, he took a life out of his own life uh, to, to, to celebrate a film uh, which, which, which has become some sort of a history, you know, you know that it has become part of a history. Uh, then, of course, uh, there is another film by Pradeep Purba, Purba um, Onata. It is apparently about uh, the rehabilitation of a rape survivor. Uh, but in the process, he brought in so many beautiful layered lead motifs into action. Uh, for example, he captured the pristine beauty of Hidardo Unknown, Meghalaya's rural landscape uh, and he juxtaposed it he wove it, wove it into his main narrative in such a beautiful way and of course the last one uh, nicolas uh, nicolas's film akuni which is doing the rounds you know which is grabbing a lot of people these days and it talks about uh, the, the quintessential northeastern experience in big cities in india that quintessential racism and of course uh, the the prejudices that we have uh, on the basis of gender, caste, religion, backgrounds, geography, and all. And in fact, he even hints at the kind of cognitive unconscious prejudices that people have. Such a beautiful film. I mean, and he has handled this milieu so well. Uh, so I'm very much optimistic about the future of the cinema of Meghalaya. I'm very much optimistic about the future of uh, the cinema of Northeast. In fact, I remember Monusda was the first to raise a pertinent question about the emergence of a Renesha in the domain of Northeastern cinema. Then Bitupanda joined hands with him and we also followed their footprints. And I seriously claim and all the all, all the epoch-making developments uh, that are taking place in the contemporary domain of Northeastern cinema constantly cogs me into claiming that, yes, there is definitely a renaissance in the offing. And I am sure you would not disagree with me. Thank you, Pranjal, uh, for your uh, very eloquent speech. And uh, now I will turn to uh, Monjibar again. Um, as you know, there are quite a lot of bottlenecks in filmmaking um, uh, as he or he has to face and after a film is ready for distribution particularly. Now, what are those bottlenecks? How do you try to work on them and what are the solutions and prospects in view of all the disadvantages a serious filmmaker faces in this region? And since and there is another part of the question, uh, I would like, because time is running out, since OTT platforms are opening up now, do you have any experience in it and how do you view the scope in it, Monjibura, please? Did you hear? Hello? I'm not hearing you. Hello? <clears throat> Your audio is missing, Monjibura. Hello? No. Hello? Hello, yes, hearing now? Can you see me now? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's perfect now, okay. Yeah. Okay, Okay. did uh, you hear my question? I have shown to you. Yeah, I did, I did. All but right. my video All right. is not coming, I think. My oh. video is not coming. Is no, I'm, we, are, okay. we are finding you. Now it is we okay. We are seeing you, I, it's okay. I don't know, anyway. Actually, you are talking about the bottlenecks no, of distributed right, films right. and religious yes. films. Actually, yeah. in a in regional film industry, it is always a problem how to uh, do the marketing of a film. In my case, it was so difficult. My initial six films, you know, uh, not to talk about Boivo. Boivo was so difficult. Only nine, ten persons were there as audience in the cinema halls. It was such a tragic, I mean, uh, tragic uh, experience in my life. And Gautam goes when I met him during that Boibhav days, he was telling me, Manju, don't get disheartened. These things happen. So you don't uh, lose your uh, distinct spirit. You keep on making films. And initially, these things happen. So I did not stop, actually. I, start, I made a series of films till now you have seen. And uh, initial periods, well, the distributors here, they are only for mainstream films, be it uh, Hindi or English or some commercial films. 
they do not care for art house, so-called art house films. So it was a very difficult experience for me, very sad actually. Then uh, after this, uh, I got nine. After that film, I stopped releasing my films. And uh, uh, you know, from Koyad days, I did not release my films in the theaters because I had to depend on the OTT platform. Either OTT platform has come now, now, but the other private channels or production like that. Luckily, most of my films got received national awards. So in the daily duration, you know, I got uh, releases, I got release of those films. And somehow my, uh, at least 70% of my cost of the film came back. So it was like that. Indirectly, I uh, made up my financial this thing, but uh, the spirit was never gone. And now this OTT platform has come, but still I feel that to get uh, the, connection with Netflix or Disney or all those platforms are very difficult because there are you need a good middleman who can look after your film, who can market your film. But this way, I'm very unfortunate somehow. Recently, movie has taken two of my films. I'm happy because that way I'm getting some good international viewers. Some good reviews are coming and I'm so relaxed and happy now because even the new generation I have seen, uh, they are exploring these OTT platforms like Netflix and Eros and all. Some of the Assamese films, when I see in Netflix, I feel very good. But I do not know uh, the production side. Are Netflix coming to uh, produce some films in this part of the country? Are uh, Reliance and other those big companies, the production companies are coming to finance our boys and our makers? Because new generation, you have seen, you have already, Bitupon has mentioned the new generation filmmakers. More than 10 uh, boys and girls are there who are really good with proper backup, with proper financial aid. They can make very good films, world films, world class films. So I'm waiting that some, uh, some good, uh, you know, production companies will come and finance and produce some films in this part of the country. And uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very uh, sure that these boys, these makers will make good films. Why not? So personally, I am very uh, uh, unhappy that, uh, you know, uh, that our films are not getting the proper platforms, proper, yes, festivals, they are roaming around. A lot of films are going to different festivals, but festivals, Critically, we are, we are getting some appreciation, but not financial aid. So I want that some good production companies will come here and produce some good films uh, uh, with our new generation filmmakers. That is my only hope now. Thank you, Monjabara. You have uh, raised a very pertinent point to discuss, uh, actually. And it also um, points to the need of film policy and backing from the state government. So um, Assam and Manipur of late have formulated their own state film film policies. So um, my now now I want to uh, deliver something about these film policies from uh, Bitupon Barbara. So uh, do you think that these policies declared by Assam and Manipur, which may be still in notification stage, would be uh, will, will they be capable of bringing a paradigm shift in cine literacy and film culture as a whole? Better one. Uh, before making my observation about the uh, film policies, particularly already a uh, Manipur and Assam government has uh, kind of announced their draft policy. I think Manipur. I don't know about. Uh, Manipur film policy, it is in the notification is issued on 29th May 2020. But before making those points, let me clarify one thing. While I was making observation about the emerging filmmakers from Northeastern states, many names are kind of missed out and it is not intentional and it is difficult to cover because often we, uh, we cannot see many of the films those are made in Nagaland. Even I have not seen, yet seen any of the films, particularly preacher films, those are made in Nagaland. I could see only Sengedurji's film and Haubam's film. I am yet to see Prodip Kruber's film. I am yet to see Dominic's film I have watched. Then someone asked about the name of uh, Miju filmmaker. 
His name is Mapuya Swangthu. Mapuya Swangthu is the name. Then someone, I mean, uh, pointed out that another young filmmaker from Wangfang K. Dengdo is also making film in Meghalaya. Actually, in our webinar today, Productive Kurva was about to join, but uh, because of the some constraints in regard to mobile connectivity, he could not join. I think if he joined this conversation, maybe he could have uh, pour light on young filmmakers from Meghalaya as well. Then other filmmaker I have missed, another two filmmakers actually I missed, those are actually pass out from uh, uh, film FTII. One is uh, Mouli Sanapati. He is now, I mean, becoming a film teacher. He has made some remarkable documentaries about many Northeastern issues. And another young filmmaker, she is also a pass out from FTII. Her name is Rima Bora. Uh, she has made a very interesting debut film called Bokul. This way, I think I may miss other names as well, but please, I beg your pardon because uh, many of the filmmakers I do not know, many of the films I am yet to see. Now, let me pour uh, some brief lights on the film policies of Assam as well as Manipur. Uh, I actually, when uh, the Assam film policy was announced, I took offense on the, the preamble section where, I mean, they have said that the uh, film is a powerful medium of entertainment, enlightenment, and communication, which has brought a huge sociocultural transformation in the society, particularly in India. When you, I mean, perceive film to be a medium of entertainment or enlightenment, or even communication, I think this entire the the definition of the film is uh, reduced to a very limited uh, level because uh, film is rather a very strong creative medium of aesthetically sound medium, and in the it say that it it kind of um, there is a definition that it incorporates all the elements of all the art forms without losing its own character. So film is a very, it cannot, I mean, reduce it to a medium of entertainment, enlightenment, or communication. Film is rather, its definition is very vast. It covers a wide variety of things. Those are highly creative. And it, it engages many people to like a cinematographer, a musician, and the director is self the he's a captain of the ship, basically, but other creative artists are also involved in making a film. So it is a very collaborative, creative medium, and its aesthetic possibilities are immense. That part of cinema we cannot ignore. Then in the Assam film policy, the <clears throat> there is a as in Assam we have got this Assam Clean Finance Development Corporation. So earlier he, it used to produce films, uh, but uh, unfortunately most of the films it finance could not garner use. I mean support commercially as well as critically. So now after this policy, I think there is promise that they will look after. Those issues, they will, I mean, scrutinize script in a better way. They will form committee to look up the those issues. But now there are some, the lean latest policy announcement, the Assam State Finance Corporation now says that it will, it shall increase its commercial functions by taking up distribution of government produced films. As Manjubara had already told that uh, distribution of cinema, or rather release of cinema in Assam is very difficult earlier, particularly regional cinema. There was no I mean, strong policy to back regional movie, so far its release is concerned, because uh, halls are booked quite ahead of time by major Hindi films mostly, or rather Hollywood films, and it is very difficult to get slot. 
or right in the slot. The prime slot is often, I mean, you never get, but you get slot in a very odd time. Mostly those are reserved from regional film. Now this policy says that it will safeguard those interests of regional film. So one of the other aspect of this uh, uh, policy is that Juti Sitravan Derje, I mean, studio in Assam called Juti Sitravan, it was, I mean, established in early 70s. Now Juti Sitravan says that rental charge of the Juti Sitravan will be rationalized so that regional film producer of the state can derive more benefit from the studio. This is one of the key promise. But uh, major trust of this policy is on subsidy. This was not earlier, I mean, very specific. Now they say that the government will subsidize the regional claims uh, after proper selection process. So basically, the, it says the subsidy from government will be granted to the producers in the form of, form, uh, in the form of granting aids for high quality films science fiction, animation films, children film, or other genres, considering their trust focus being ethnic culture, land, and people of Assam. Further, ethnic language films are, all, films are also to be promoted by the government. In the second clause, it says that there shall be a script committee headed by a commissioner and secretary of the cultural affairs department in which chairman Assam State Film Finance Corporation and Chairman Juti Sitrapath will be members. Director of Cultural Affairs will be member secretary of the state committee. And one member of the committee shall be from field of literature and two members from field of directions. I, I mean, uh, take offense of this, I mean, composition of the committee as well, because uh, I think some technical members from film committee should have been included in this committee besides the members from literature as well as members from film direction, because technical issues of a film is very, very important, film being a technical medium. Then a major clause in terms of subsidy is that the, the for getting subsidy, producers said should be a permanent resident of Assam, and depending on the overall production quality, this subsidy will be provided in three different slabs, the quantum of the subsidy will be fixed by committee, it's like 25 percent total eligible cost to 20 lakhs of film like this. Another promise of this, because because of the dis distribution constraints or releasing problem, the Assam government now says that it will form a mobile digital movie theater. It will go on from one place to another. Like uh, in Assam, we have got a mobile theater, I mean, culture. So now government says that it will also, besides, I mean, ensuring the releasing part of a film, it will also uh, establish a mobile digital movie theater, which will go from one place to another to screen films. And for daily and compulsory films, it has I mean, I mean, specified that the prime one prime time show in the theaters, as preferred by the producer, is compulsory for regional films. This is now ensured. The additional show will not require guarantee money. This was our earlier earlier the practice that you have to sub, uh, deposit guarantee money so that during the run uh, run of your film. Now it says that additional show will not require guarantee money, but the conditional, which can be conditions which can be arranged after mutual discussion between executive and producer. And besides that, if the producer demands more additional source in the prime time subsequently, then he has to or she has to deposit the guarantee money of 10% only, uh, of total sale of 100% occupancy of a theater. This is a very good aspect of this policy. And there are other, I mean, I mean, provisions of award to I mean, address the filmmakers. The subsidy also, it says that, that the, the subsidy amount of 20% of total eligible cost the maximum limit of 25 lakhs for a film will be provided by the government. 
the subsidy will be given to a maximum of 20 films per year it's very good if the film gets a national award this is very interesting if the film gets a national award the remaining 75 percent of percent of the eligible cost will be returned by the government subject to maximum of rupees one crore up to one crore one film can get one producer will be eligible for two films only during his entire career so this is i mean uh, substantially good i mean provisions for encouragement of uh, local films but the costing part will be decided by a government committee according to according to the rates of duty sector while assam film i mean uh, uh, policy i mean focus more on subsidy parts more on the film ensuring the releasing uh, the constraints the monitor state policy i like most is because it focus is entirely on different aspects because uh, it says the cinema industry in Manipur offers a unique and fascinating story, all the more because it was largely unexpected. Due to its concentra concentration within a limited culture and linguistic domain, the growth of cinema in Manipur faced a series of obstacles. Despite these hurdles, this vital question is how the industry generates various talents that cater to the art of entertainment in our state by crafting self sufficient market of its own with 100% cost of production covered by domestic revenue. This is very interesting. So the monetary film policy, Monipur film policy is uh, very interesting because it focuses on developing the free art for which the cine cultural policy, it says that it it is not impossible it is not impossible to boost the competitiveness of cinema only with financial support when creativity is lacking to cultivate and manage creative talents among the cinemas and also to sensitize the general public with a new sensitivity of cinema deep flowing action shall be initiated for which i mean monipur monipur films uh, state film development society is formed besides holding at least three, four film festivals, one Manipur State Film Festival, another Manipur International Film Festival, then besides other festivals, which will screen local as well as foreign films. The major trust, as I earlier I mean, told, that uh, the major focus of this I mean, uh, uh, policy is on academic activities, or rather uh, focusing more on creative part of cinema, the creative aspects of cinema, in which Cine education shall be provided by intervening appropriately. Seminar, conferences, workshop, master classes on cinema shall be organized on regular manner. The history of Manipuri cinema shall be documented. Besides forming, establishing cine archive and museum, cine, cinema library and screening of regular, regularly world cinema. It has also provisions of honor and awards for films. Uh, uh, good films or re remarkable films. Besides, it has there. While there is no mention about film societies, and there is there was no representation from film society or any I mean critics in Assam during while I mean formulation of Assam state film policy. The Manipur state Manipur state film policy I mean, clearly says that it has a separate I mean, uh, uh, provision for separate. A clause for film societies in which says that network of film societies government shall strive to encourage and strengthen the network of film societies and cine clubs for cinema to reach out the masses it will i mean encourage i mean uh, forming of film societies in future film societies and cine clubs shall be made partners in organizing festival seminar discourse appreciation course on cinema this is a very good point so in current to this is what I've been missing. This is what lacking in Assam policy. I think if this could have been incorporated in Assam policy, Assam policy would have been much better. So in comparison to Assam policy, Assam state film policy, it is a very, I mean, I highly appreciate this Manipur state film policy because it focuses on uh, kind of uh, increasing or uh, focusing on developing cine literacy among the masses and to forming of film societies in remote areas so as to outreach people 
so far i mean encouraging people to watch better films in coming years thank you very much thank you bidupan uh, for giving a comparative study of the both film policy of from uh, assam and manipur um, our time is already over for a lot of time so in that case we can extend half an hour more because we have already having some questions from participants who have registered so before going to answering and replying those questions i would ask the other three participants first i would ask uh, to summarize the, the reply mekasona kongbam um, i would like to know uh, what should be the role of the film society and also the government in affecting cinemas of the northeast particularly in the, with emphasis on monitor your audio is not coming hello ha ah, okay yeah it is okay now ah. yeah uh, film being the most effective medium of the mass media which can easily access to the masses around the globe so it has been treated as the special and the important subject for global harmony and the integration why have there been many international federation on cinema namely international federation of film producers association set up in 1933 in brussels international federation of film society set up in 1947 in cannes international federation of film critics founded in 1930 in brussels these bodies are meant for checking and balancing the purpose of the film medium and to bring the quality cinema for providing genuine information education entertainment to the masses as well as to promote film culture former director of national film archives of india pkner once said that there are two strands of film education one is to provide the education to the film makers by the institution institute and other one is to provide the education to the masses about the film he said that the both the education are equally important here lies the importance of the this uh, film societies and film critics to achieve the goal of film education to the masses film society of manipur which i work as a president and uh, my colleague this pavan kumar is secretary in the is the third oldest film society in the north east india established in 1966 it was before the birth of manipuri cinema that the film society of manipur had played a great role towards the promotion of good film in manipur some founder members like s n san g c dongla later came out as film mac with the great support and initiative of our beloved uh, secretary mr premen nabazundar who is the vice president of the ffsi the film society of manipur once defunct has been reactivated with organizing three day international women film festival in the last year in impal in collaboration with manipur state film development society since then we have organized tunisian film festival then bangladesh film festival in impal from the support of the federation of film society of india and we have monthly screening of critically acclaimed films in association with manipur state film development society but film society movement only cannot bring a private film industry in north india without collective efforts of all those involved in cinema we have seen the potentiality of cinema in the north east india comprising of eight states and this state has produced its own often films and reach out these films to the international level also hence there is need a strong support from the government to provide better services for the film industry in east state north east states has more than uh, 220 ethnic communities having its own beautiful dialect and distinctive way of life so there are so many unexplored stories in the reason we can create more different tastes of indian cinema in both domestic and global market some cinema we started its journey in 1935 as its own film studio that is driven still set up in 1960 original film and television institute set up in 1999 some state film finance development corporation set up in 1974 for the development of the assam cinema a new film policy of assam was also announced last year and uh, which approved the please rupees 25 lakhs cd for a film which, which the person cost is rupees 1 crore and 1 crore reward for the films achieved 
with Nessen Award and two crore award for films nominated for Oscar. Moreover, a corporate fund has been created for the welfare of the artists. So I feel that the some state film policy is one of the best film policies in the country. And the policy also emphasizes extending Assami film market in Southeast Asian countries. So Assam has a better position in the film industry. Likewise, every state in the region must have at least its own a good film policy, a film finance corporation, a film studio to make a brave film industry for which film bodies in each state have to come forward to this goal. Through the medium of the film, one can project one's identity, culture, and besides providing large employment to the youth. In the larger interest, a powerful film body of the Northeast region may also be formed for helping each other to bring a Bahrain film industry in the region. Once Ministry of Information Broadcasting organized Bahrain Conference of Information Ministers of the States and the Union Territories. It was a good and great platform for discussion of the problems and the development of various media, including films, of each and every state and union territory. Now it is must to make a pressure to the ministry to continue the Binance conference so that overall growth of the quality signal can be brought about in India. That's all. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Kung Mom, for showing some light on the prospect of film policy that can be played in your future. And uh, now I would ask one question to Hobam. As a matter of fact, there are quite a few gifted filmmakers who are self-taught. But at the same time, film learning and established film institutes have also played a valuable part in terms of training the film minds, able minds. With a film institute background, uh, can you explain or throw some light on this issue? about the importance of film learning? Uh, Manoj, uh, yeah. well, I'm, I'm a be believer of uh, film education. I mean, uh, I mean, I waited for six years to go to the film school. You know? uh, I mean, it might not happen, but luckily after six years, I got to go to the film school. I tried for, I mean, I gave exam for three, three years, but it, it, there was a lot of zero years and, you know, finally I got uh, after waiting for six years, but in between, I was already assisting Aribamji, and uh, you know, as I said, I'm I'm editing a film on Aribam Samsarma, and uh, you know, it's 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 very nice that you know yeah. he said you know he also he also learned filmmaking during the making of Matamgi Manipur, the first feature film of uh, Manipur. You know, so somehow or the other, you know, you have to learn filmmaking. It's it's a very technical medium and. Uh, you know, you have to learn it. Maybe, maybe nowadays things are changing. You know, uh, the medium has, you know, the language has evolved, and it's it's it's, it's a whole new medium. So maybe, you know, when when I was in the, you know, why I particularly wanted to go to the film school was I was very fascinated by the uh, cinematic language, and during my time, you know, we hardly, you know, uh, main thing was also about watching movies, and film film school were the place where you can watch movies. I mean, nowadays, you know, you have, you can watch movies, um, you know, at home and that, that is also one way of doing it. And, uh, but, but I definitely am, am a believer of film education and I can see that change, that thing happening in Assam. You know, I, I was in, I think I was with Manjuti, uh, maybe, maybe a couple of years back uh, on, on one of the festivals in Assam. And I said this, Uppal that was saying, uh, Uppal Bhord Pujari was telling me that, you know, uh, uh, Manipur is doing excellent work in cinema. I said, you should look, you know, you should look to Assam in the next few years because, because the Assam Institute, I think, you know, if you look at the last couple of films, I mean, uh, and filmmakers, Suraj, Jai Chang, you know, even even the technical uh, people like uh, uh, this uh, Amrit Pritam, every everybody is from uh, yeah from from film school. They you know, and I know I have been in touch with all these young filmmakers, and uh, you know the, they 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 know the whole you know they they are aware about what is happening in the world, and I think that is majorly because of the film school. 
and that is really helping the region and then earlier it was uh, i mean the, you know uh, it, it's also help, helping in a way about the marketing part of uh, filmmaking also because you know uh, being being film education getting film education is not just about you know uh, learning the craft but also about knowing the trait of uh, filmmaking and uh, this, I think a lot of these new filmmakers, they they know how to market their films. I, I, I'm particularly more interested in independent cinema. And so uh, so how we can, you know, somehow, how we can at least survive. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't know much about how the commercial uh, aspect of cinema uh, can handle our kind of film. But I, I, I think we, you know, uh, as a filmmaker, as a film uh, producer, director, I, I'm keen to, you know, get back my money back so that, you know, at least I can make my next film. And uh, luckily my my film, uh, when I did my feature film, I realized that. I mean, when while doing documentaries, it was mostly funded by television and uh, some of them were self-funded. And But when I made my first feature film, uh, I had to get back my money, you know, uh, I mean, I invested uh, quite a lot, lot of money. I mean, it's not a huge money for a other, other, maybe for others, but it was quite a lot from my own pocket. So, you know, I think for me, festivals help um, uh, get the money back. I mean, you know, it's being screened, I think uh, having screened it in Berlin, Netflix automatically took it, you know, so... So all this, I think, all this uh, going to co-production market in NFDC, all these ideas, uh, you know, all these things came from the film school, and I think it really helped. And a lot of, a uh, lot of uh, people from uh, Northeast now, even Dominic is my junior, uh, you know, from uh, Meghalaya, then uh, Sange there from the, from SRFTI. Uh, Asok Vilu is one filmmaker from a young chap from Manipur. Uh, so a lot of people are actually going to film school. I think probably during my time, it was a bit difficult. I mean, uh, probably it was like I, I went to the film school after after a gap of 15 years. So, you know, you know, um, because my previous senior was Deepak Roy, who was a sound sound engineer. And I, I went to the... Uh, I came to, went to the film school after 15 years. And also, you know, this whole thing about the revival of uh, uh, film society movement in Manipur and all, you know, all this knowledge. I mean, um, uh, we got together, Megachandraji, and we got together and revived the whole thing because we really believe that, you know, uh, this is also one way of learning films. I mean, uh, and educating people and also, you know, the watching and I, I think this is the best way of learning films. So this idea of whole f uh, film society movement, you know, all, all this, you know, when you, when you go to institute, you learn all this. And definitely it's helping the young filmmakers. And one more thing also, I mean, you also belong to a certain community. If you, if you belong to a film school, you know, there is a certain community and that community, you know, you get, you get, you get, you know, you, being part of the community, you, you also get all those benefits and uh, you, all those knowledge. Thank you, Manu, sir. Uh, thank you, Habam. Uh, <clears throat> there are some questions sent by participants. But before answering, I would, I want um, from Pranjal Bhatt to speak in a very short way, short in his speech about, uh, the, the filmmakers having facing problems in spite of getting good platforms through film festivals. What are the problems in facing, filmmakers facing from this region? Uh -huh. Apart from getting this focus and uh, this impetus from the film festivals. Well, Monosda and all, uh, this is a very significant aspect that, that you have raised. Actually, um, see, uh, can we think about the emergence of our new breed of filmmakers? Uh, like uh, Hawan Paman Kumar, Pradeep Purbapurba, and uh, uh, those from Assam, since the film festivals. F film festivals are a lifeline for those filmmakers, for our breed of film filmmaking. is the sanctum sanctorum for uh, them, for us. Uh, if at all we have to survive, we need platforms like the film festivals. But the million dollar question that confronts us today is, 
is it going to be tenable? Is it going to be plausible given the present scenario? So it's been a million dollar question. There has been a feud uh, uh, between the traditional filmmaking schools and the, the grids and, and the emergence of OTT platforms and all. Now, we are in a, in a catch-22 situation at this particular juncture. What I feel about the imminent future is that uh, we have no option but to adapt to the emerging nature of OTT platforms. If at all, we have to be viable in market. Market in the sense, of course, in Pogon sense also. If at all, we have to get back the money that we put in our production, uh, we'll have to adapt to the grim reality of OTT platforms. Uh, now, there are certain very interesting but staggering and dismal you know, statistics for us. See, we are into the fourth month of uh, post, I mean, COVID-19 lockdown. And during this particular period, there has been if an unprecedented surge in the viewership of OTT platforms, okay? But are we be sure, are we safe for certain that uh, certain very significant you know, creations from our Northeast have got the limelight? Are, 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 are marveling over the emergence of a very significant sunk of viewership as far as my knowledge goes, no. Perhaps Akuni is the only exception, which was among the start busters uh, for a while on Netflix. Uh, the rest are struggling. Be it the films of Rimadas, be it uh, you know the films of uh, Pradeep Kurbas, Kurbas, Onata was there on Netflix. It is not there now. Uh, then uh, uh, there is an, another very significant film uh, from Northeast, which unfortunately went not unnoticed uh, when it got released, Three Smoking Barrels. It's been there on Netflix, but not getting significant viewership. Then there are some very important films on uh, in OTT platforms like Movie Saints. Um, but if, uh, as far as I know, only Amik and Bornadi Bhotia are you know, garnering a little bit of success. The rest are you know, struggling, they're gapsing for bread. So uh, now this is a question for us. This is a challenge for us. How we ensure that our prodigious filmmakers, our talented filmmakers survive? How we can we can help them keep afloat? And this is a million dollar question for us. We need to do something. We need to capitalize on uh, the, the, the prospects of OTT platforms. Uh, now, another question that confronts us is whether the kind of, you know, films that we make, that we turn out, fit into that particular criteria. Uh, we should never be under the impression that the OTT platforms will, 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 will be bored by any sense of social consciousness. They will, they will, they will feel an inner urge to promote our culture, our issues and all. And now how will you woo them? How will you get into that cold world? Now, this is something we need to focus on. This is something we need to reflect on. And a concerted effort is required. Of course, uh, government's effort is required. Our effort is required. The effort of the film society is of utmost importance. And uh, whether we survive this particular inertia, whether we can carry forward with it, depends on how we adapt to that scenario. Uh, so, but I can tell you one thing for certain, that the future of entertainment, the future of cinema is heading towards an extremely AI dominated milieu, whether we like it or not, if at all we have to survive, we must adapt to that. Uh, this is all I want to share with you. I don't know whether you will be at one with me, but this is my personal take uh, after having studied the entire scenario. This is what has occurred to me. We, if at all we have to survive, we will have to adapt to that. In one form or the other, of course. Okay, thank you, Pranjal, for your thoughts. On the latest Pardon, scene, are you uh, developing? Sir, please, uh, take up the questions. Yeah, yeah. I am now, now taking up questions now. And uh, we all have to answer very briefly because there are a lot of questions. And the first question I, I'm putting here is from Madhu Arabankara, who asked that uh, staring from Jaimoti, Assamese cinema has a strong connection with his literature. What is the contemporary state of Assamese cinema? with respect to adaptations from literature. I think that Manjubara can be uh, the right person to un reply this question. Uh, <clears throat> actually, now you see, timing, time is changing. Viewership is also so different. Nowadays, uh, the new generation viewers, I don't think they care for literature anymore. They want some very clips, very slick uh, films. 
they what they want to enjoy you know within a short period of time like 90 minutes maximum because they are restless now they cannot continue because if you uh, make a film based on a novel or something like that it ha- it tends to be very long and very narrative that kind of thing so i think now uh, those kind of i mean dialogue based films are over for the new generation i feel so they need some kind of i mean uh, technically very slick something very different subjects you know nowadays after seeing all these web series and the netflix uh, films anybody knows what kind of films the viewers want this is pranjal was very right in fact saying observing few things i support you pranjal there thank you uh, ma'am viewers it is changing yeah thank you uh, next question is from uh, nigamantha manu sakraborty who asks that could you could we have some reflections on films made in tripura i have watched a couple of them thanks to mr joseph who was associated with them i think uh, pranjal bora can go to this uh, question pranjal well uh, uh, films from sorry, tripura Mahusta, i have not really you? well versed with the uh, films films from tripura but tripura, i have come okay. to learn that some significant headway is being made in tripura also uh, but uh, to be very honest and candid i'm still in the dark about the kind of significant developments which might be taking place in the in in the domain of cinema in tripura uh, i think bitu bonda could be the right person to address this issue no i know only one uh, filmmaker from um, tripura he was doing uh, he was taking some remarkable films many years back uh, joseph polintana uh, yeah. monu chakraborty said about him as well but uh, for reasons based known to him uh, he i mean stopped making films after making two three films and present i mean i mean present i mean uh, environment uh, present breed of film makers any of if any of them coming up in tripura i don't know about that okay thank you uh, so there is another question from madhu ravankara who asks uh can somebody highlight the state of mainstream cinema in the northeast are they the prototype of hindi or bengali mainstream cinema so i think um megasundra can reply this question yeah uh, mainstream film prototype of hindi or bengali mainstream film yeah uh, some of the filmmakers they they are <coughs> they made the films in the style of this uh, mainstream cinema so the, it uh, popular uh, it gives the some uh, taste to the people to our people about this the uh, mainstream uh, cinema so uh, after this uh, the, this uh, video films mostly they met in the this uh, uh, on this uh, the line of this the mainstream cinema and the people are enjoying on this uh, uh, type of the films and the uh, earlier also in manipur it, it was in the type of these uh, mainstream cinema that uh, uh, even some cinema met this uh, olang thai one but so it was a blockbuster film in manipur it uh, depicted the uh, uh, obi uh, sole in the this uh, uh, in the box office and this film ran 32 weeks this is the uh, uh, mostly this the longest running film in manipur so the people this uh, film maker they adopt this uh, uh, mainstream cinema of this um, uh, uh, this uh, bollywood type or from um, they uh, they took the this the style of this uh, malayalam and uh, this tamil film also so they this uh, make the our uh, Uh, this masses our people they enjoy this uh, type of the film so that they got the entertainment from this uh, uh, type of these films this one. thank you kumbham uh, there is a question from prashant pujari uh, how strong is the role of film policy of assam in the execution of the dreams of young film makers bitupon can reply i think I I have already said that this subsidy yeah. part is very important. Besides uh, ensuring the release of film, I think board can uh, substantially help help uh, young filmmakers of Assam. Thank you. Okay, there is a 
very good question. I think it is for Havam. Uh, the questioner is a renowned film critic, Minakshi Shede. She asks, where do you all mostly get, uh, mostly raise money for your films? Havam. <laughs> I think he already knows it, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's like I'm an independent filmmaker, you know. Uh, so I, I, I kind of try try to get money from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, uh, but you know what? I, uh, I think there there is a technique. I mean, technique for every filmmaker because ultimately you have to make films. I mean, so what what I usually do is if I don't have money. I, I go to my friends, you know, I, I talk to them, I, I get my friends to do the film together. Maybe one of my friends is having a camera. So I, you know, uh, uh, so that's how I do it. But uh, I think she's, she's uh, asking the general uh, uh, scenario of uh, uh, this uh, filmmaking uh, in, uh, general, in general about filmmaking, producing film in Northeast. I think that way, I think only Assam has, you know, somehow, if you say industry, it's only Assam, you know, otherwise, you know, in, in Manipur or at least in, in any other state, I mean, except, except Assam, it's not very, very systematic. I mean, it's, it's all because of the love of cinema that people are making films. I mean, so you, you can't, you can't really say, uh, you know, so, so in a way, you know, what people are doing is, uh, because of the new technology, what people are doing is earlier, you know, uh, documentary was the way to express it. Now with the new new technology coming, I think people are getting into fiction films. But uh, like like me, I mean, people are not not very sure how to get their money back. Thank you, Havam. Uh, there is another question from Suresh Gaduka. Uh, he says that we miss dedicated serious filmmakers like B and Saikia. Now we are waiting miracles from once in a blue moon occasion kind of uh, filmmakers. How do you sustain the consistency of good films? Uh, Manju Bora, can you reply? How can you sustain the consistency Actually, of good you films? See, the, uh, you cannot say that though somebody is making a single film, he is not dedicated to his profession. You cannot say like that, first of all, because everybody is dedicated. Once somebody is coming to this uh, field of work, uh, he or she has some kind of dedication. That is why he or she is coming to work in this field. So dedication is always there. But it is by chance that you get a good producer, some good finance, because uh, it is very difficult to make a film, you know, financially. Uh, everybody knows. Like Pavon is telling uh, that uh, he is an independent filmmaker. Even I am an independent filmmaker. But the problem is uh, with our kind, I mean, my, my generation filmmakers, we have some kind of problem. Like I cannot edit myself. I cannot run the camera. So I need a uh, bigger team than uh, today's, I mean, new generation's filmmakers. But now, now these new generation filmmakers, with two, three persons, they can complete a film because they do the editing, they do the sound themselves. See, for example, Rima Das. She's, a, she's such a, I mean, she's an example for new generation filmmakers. She does everything herself and she has achieved so much. Now she has come to a point that now she can run a very big production. So many people, so many production houses are coming to finance her now. So now uh, this Gaduka's question, I think how to, uh, Continue the consistency. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Uh, his question is that. But that way right. you see Janu Golwa. So Janu Golwa is very lucky to get a producer like Shoiladhar Borwa. So he was all the time, he was, you know, producing films for him. So he was very fortunate to get a producer like uh, Shoiladhar Borwa. Then even Bhavendana Chaikya, with his own, I mean, his, I mean, his personality, his capacity, his talents. He could manage NFDC, including NFDC, he, they have also financed him. So now we are waiting for some kind of production houses, actually. In Assam, we are lack of that. If, uh, except Sholodhar Borua or some very less, like uh, nowadays, Shankar Gwengkazi, he is trying his best to finance, I mean, to produce good films. So except these people, I do not think any good production house who is coming up to 
support these new generation filmmakers. I always dream, I always think that some someday some production house will come up, they will produce a series of films with these, I mean, these boys, these girls, they are waiting for getting some little bit of finance. The other day, somebody was telling me, Madam, please just give us 10, 15 lakhs. We'll get some good films. So with 10, 15 lakhs also, they are dreaming to make a good film. Whereas we cannot. I cannot make a film uh, with a budget of 10, 15 lakhs. I cannot. But these new generation filmmakers, they can make. And they are very talented, I'm telling you. All these, I mean, I have a long list of uh, these filmmakers, more than 14, 15 in Assam itself. In Northeast, more than that. And they are so talented. But they are waiting only for 10, 15 lakhs in their hands so that they can start there. They can, you know, uh, they can be practically uh, making a, they will be able to make a film. So consistency will come from that only. No? You cannot make a film out of nowhere. You need a, at least a little bit of fun. You need, a, you need your talent. Talent is everywhere. But who will produce? Who will support financially? That is the main question. Okay, uh, there is another question for Manjubra because the questioner who put the question, he mentioned your name. You have to answer that. Uh, the question is, do you think that Northeast filmmakers have a unique narrative technique different from other parts of our country? Uh, no, not exactly. Nowadays, this scenario is changing. Last five years or seven years, we have been watching films very different from the previous films. It is no more like Dr. Bhavindranath uh, Chaikya's film. It is no more like Janu Gorwa's film. It is no more like my films even. Because you see, uh, nowadays, uh, this Vaskar Hajurika, Rima Das, and uh, all these Suras Duora, Joy Sang, Khanjan Kishunath, I have written their names, Himjuti Talukdar, Pradeep from Meghalaya, then Pogan Yu from Manipur. You all are making different, I mean, making uh, films which are uh, very stylish, very different. It is your own style. It is neither narrative nor, you know, it is very different, in fact, very interesting. So we are very hopeful that uh, it will be no more like those traditional formula kind of films, you know, art house films generally, very slow, very narrative like that. It is changing now. Okay, uh, Partizip Morwa must have got the uh, right answer anyway. Uh, so next question is from Rita Dutta, uh, who asks, uh, what about the short film scenario? Can uh, Pabon Hawam reply? What about the short film scenario? I think it's the same everywhere. Uh, you know, uh, it's not just about uh, North East. Sound. I think just... Hello, can you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. No, no, no. Hello. Not, uh, no, What's I'm up? not getting your audio. Hello, hello. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> got confused. I think the scenario is the same everywhere. I mean, but. You know, last uh, you know, uh, last couple of years, I was I was lucky to watch a lot of a uh, uh, lot of short films from Northeast India. Short, short in the sense I'm talking about fiction. You know, like and like the rest of the country, I think a lot of people in here also, especially from Assam. You know, the, they're making a lot of uh, short films, uh, fiction short films. I'm not talking about documentaries. Documentary short film has really <coughs> gone on. You know. Uh, Earlier, you know, Durdarshan used to commission films and they, they used to give some money. So short film, documentary films uh, used to be there. You know, a lot of people used to make documentaries. But now short fiction films are being made by people who really dream of doing larger, you know, the working in a feature film or, you know. So you can and, and festivals are also coming in a big way here in this region. So a lot of people are making those films for... Uh, uh, for the festivals also are. So, so, so it's, it's, it's the same scenario as in the rest of the country. People are making it for festivals and for their, you know, uh, uh, personal, uh, you know, urge to, you know, to show their talent. Otherwise, uh, I mean, uh, uh, commercially, I mean, there's no place for such kind of films. So it's yeah. really difficult. At, at least documentary has a chance. But short fiction doesn't have any place to, except for festivals and you know and showing it in the local channels. Okay, Habam, can you uh, answer the next question? In one go, you can reply that it's from Nayanika Bora. 
yeah. he asks that is art films helps to commercially grow a film industry if not what should we can do for our uh, to make our industry like mainstream any opinion about that well uh, as i said earlier i don't i don't care about the you know whole thing of this mainstream and uh, this. i'm a very independent filmmaker so uh, i think art definitely uh, art in the sense i mean if you if you do good work i think the it, it last but uh, it last and uh, it, it it affects a uh, it affects the whole uh, whole system whole environment uh, but i i'm not sure about about the commercial aspect of it or or do the the, the whole whole thing about this whole business of filmmaking i i don't really know but i definitely it helps the the society it helps the human race definitely thank you uh, there is a comment about megasandra rajib kumar shukla who says that adding to the aesthetic appreciation capacity of the people has been and is a paramount task of film society's movement through megasandra z it's a comment not a question uh, there is another question from rita dutta the very concept of good cinema is ambivalent in nature what can the film critics do to pursue the masses who are mostly into bollywood to watch other language independent films bitu can can you reply pardon uh, can you repeat the question yes the question is from rita datta uh, the very concept of good cinema is ambivalent in nature what can the film critics do to pursue the masses who are mostly into bollywood to watch other language independent films this the the, the the i mean uh, example of manipur uh, film policy is i mean uh, enough to elaborate this point because unless you i mean develop your masses develop in educate your masses as you you perhaps know that about uh, adur gopal krishna you know while uh, he was uh, passing out from fdii about for 10 years he used to screen films across the nook and corner of uh, kerala and sometimes while i mean there was no subtitle he used to i mean narrate the film to the audience that way kind of he i mean uh, inculcated the cine literacy uh, through the very i mean grassroots level and that is how you know today i mean the malayalam uh, kerala is one state where i mean film literacy is very high the same i mean is uh, true uh, to i mean uh, uh, west bengal as well it is very i mean Uh, clear because it is because of the film society movement is because very i mean strong in west bengal and there is a very, very good i mean i mean film i mean appreciation uh, culture also so basically you have to educate your masses about the uh, nature of uh, film uh, which is i mean which speaks about their own i mean uh, their own life their own i mean society uh, not about something very superficial not about very a remote society not about something very rosy kind of uh, society or rosy kind of life the, the those film who speaks of your own story are i think good films and um, uh, if you speak them you, if you narrate them with the aesthetic qualities a particular art form i mean deemed to have thank you okay well done uh is there pranjal bora still there or gone yeah i'm here pranjal pranjal yeah yeah okay uh, you are not visible yes, i can hear your, you. your video is not working or what you are uh, not so my, there is some problem with my video it has got freezed but i am audible oh. i can hear audible. you <laughs> carry on with it. okay then it's a question actually you can uh, relate uh, uh, very aptly i think the question is from rajiv kumar sukla uh the question is is an opportunity also being seen in a north eastern cinema to connect to audience using new online platforms as a result of the ongoing covid-19 induced lockdown and thus be comparatively free from the commercial pressures yes sukla ji this is what i i i was hinting at 
we should try to capitalize on this particular stuff. Uh, when it comes to the independent filmmakers, uh, they should uh, try to acclimatize themselves to the emerging scenario. Uh, I, I personally feel uh, if uh, properly oriented, if they go about properly, there is no reason why we won't be able to capitalize on this particular new scenario. Yes, uh, because those OTT platforms have their own methods, own market dynamics and all. And you can even play with them. If you have the creativity, if you have the strategy, uh, this is a golden opportunity for this new breed of filmmakers to, 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 to further their causes. I personally believe like that, and there are plenty of examples, you know, uh, that you that are that are uh, that are so rampant these days. For example, uh, a couple of uh, weeks back, there came a film Bulbul. Uh, Bulbul uh, uh, is a Netflix original. Being a Netflix original, there is no need to explain. It was completely molded and oriented for commercial consumption, and it was. It was it was it was meant for commercial consumption. It was nothing sort of a commercial pot boiler, but somehow uh, the the director uh, you know uh, tweaked it, and in the middle of the narrative, uh, she changed the focus so much so that it continued to be a commercial pot boiler, but the focus was changed in such a way that it ultimately became a very powerful full feminist narrative uh, so these are some of the you know innovative strategy uh, our filmmakers might think about uh, so i personally feel that this is in a way there are challenges ahead definitely but this is in a way a grand opportunity for us the new breed of filmmakers from northeast to capitalize on the present situation but uh, as I have already told you, I repeat, uh, the, the future of entertainment, the future of cinema is going to be the future of the AI-mediated AI milieu. There is no respite from that. There is no relief from that. We must accept it as such. Thank you, Pranjal. <clears throat> there is another question. Uh, Magasandra Kumbam can, uh, can reply that. The question is from Marhun Lang, Harwan Lang. Uh, the question is, would you consider revival of cinemas in Northeast India as a new wave movement in Northeast Indian cinema? Yeah, we can... Uh, we, we have to do some uh, about this. The, we have to strengthen the film society movement in the region. And we have to organize more film festivals. And uh, we have to Take the help from the uh, film federation mm -hmm. of India to get more films, and uh, after it, it will take more time. So that we have to educate the people also. Even in the we have to take the discussion with the filmmakers so that we can make a, a strong movement from the region. So that in in the north region there are so many unexplored stories, and we can make a new. Uh, film from this notice uh, India. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, for the remaining questions, we can reply in very shortly. So uh, the next question is may, uh, to Havan Pavan Kumar, asked by Minaki Sede. Uh, she asks, uh, do you filmmakers film local? Any audiences are very influenced by Arirang Korean TV or MTV and their expectations are shaped accordingly, making it a challenge. Uh, uh, definitely, I think, uh, especially in Manipur, uh, I don't know about the other states, uh, definitely in Manipur, Arirang and Korean. Uh, sorry. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I, can, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah. Oh. I can't hear. Okay, uh, I mean, yeah, so definitely in Manipur, uh, at least, I think it's very much influenced by Korean culture. I mean, so uh, I think it's, it's a great ch challenge for the filmmakers here, you know, especially in the commercial circuit, if you know, uh, the way the way people the, the people dress, uh, the men protecting his dress, or even even the location, I think it's it's a big challenge because people are you know so much into Korean culture. I mean the youths, even even you know my, my kid, uh, they they're always into all this stuff. So it's it's very difficult for me, you know, for my generation to understand that. But I think it's a big challenge for uh, people, especially who are working in the commercial sector. 
Okay. So how about there is another question mentioned your name, the question yeah. uh, put by Madhu Ravankara. He asked that, how about it? Could you screen your documentary to the people of Manipur and how was it accepted by the people of Manipur? See, I've been doing documentaries for the last 13, 14 years. So uh, definitely my films have been screened. Not sound. <clears throat> I think it's a problem with Manjudi, right? Everybody can hear me. Yes, yes. I hear yes, you. Yes. We can yeah, I think it's, it's the only problem. Yeah, Manjudi has a problem. Uh, so, so let me answer. I think there's no time. So uh, I think definitely, yeah, I've been doing documentaries for the last, last 13, 14 years. So I have been showing my films here at least because uh, at least after, uh, all these films were, you know, uh, shown in festivals, luckily. And uh, then, you know, uh, when travels to a festival, you get... You know, you the government, uh, you know, felicitates you, and somehow you are able to show it in the in private screenings, obviously, and in the felicitations. Uh, so that is the only way of showing uh, documentaries, definitely. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, regarding your question about how people receive it, well, I have always done films about contemporary issues in Manipur, uh, which really affects me as a person and. Definitely, I think it's, it, 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 it's important for the local audience. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, there is a question by Marhun Lang, Karwan Lang, another question. And the question is, uh, would you say that films of Northeast India are influenced by films from outside? Bitukon, you can reply. I think. Films from outside means uh, what? And not yes, specified. Right, right. Not specified. But I think uh, that's that <laughs> similar almost with the earlier question asked to I mean, Pabon It is, it, it, is, it is by, I mean, Korean movie, I mean, the answer is same. <coughs> Even many of the Naga movies I mean, they are making now is highly influenced by Korean movies. <coughs> okay. And... Uh, um, there is a question. Okay. So Ankan Raskumar, he asks, are the challenges faced by documentary filmmakers of Northeast India similar to rest of the country? How about you can answer? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. See, the, the, <laughs> I think it's a very simple answer. I mean, uh, the, it's it's always I mean the problems are everywhere you know uh, maybe the situation is a bit different here you know you have to work with uh, maybe there are military zones where you have to work but I think problem as a filmmaker I think the problem is same everywhere you know uh, you just have to know how to deal with it so uh, definitely one problem is finance uh, <laughs> that is a major problem. Uh, but now with the coming of digital uh, medium, I believe that uh, if you really want to make a film, you can make it. Uh, but I think the challenges are the same everywhere. Okay. There is a comment, not a question. It is from Giridhar Gurujarajan. Gururajan. He says that Northeast, especially Arunachal Pradesh, has a rich exotic nature and you can invite the Hindi filmmakers to use for shooting purposes, instead of going abroad, these places can become revenue earning for the government. So, uh, Pranjal, you can reply. Uh, again, it's a very interesting question. Actually, there were attempts to use as mainstream filmmakers uh, to this part of the country. In fact, uh, there are certain films, uh, if my memory is not betraying me, Rakesh Roshan's Koila was shot exclusively in all national produce. Uh, but uh, eventually that uh, particular, uh, it did not survive. The reason was uh, probably the uh, infrastructural lacunas we have in this part of the nation. And of course, the, uh, the, the, the gory history of insurgents, you know, all these you know, factors combined together uh, somehow precipitated an environment which was not, not really conducive to that kind of effort. But let's hope uh, that future holds out a lot of promises. Let's hope uh, the people here, the administration here, or rather the people at the helm of affairs would uh, try to see to it that uh, there is some hope, some optimism, some glimmer of hope in this particular aspect. 
Uh, we are looking okay. forward to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Haubam, you want to say something? Yeah, just I just wanted to add this that uh, the NFDC has, uh, or maybe INB Ministry has this film felicitation office, office where you know that they're they're in touch with all the uh, states. It's not just about money, uh, North East uh, turn states, but the rest whole country they they're in touch, and there is a nodal officer in every state which looks after this. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so there are some questions I probably missed, and but uh, one question is visible here in this uh, point of time, and it is uh, it is Lu by Luku Morang. But addressed to me, she asks that what are the qualities needed to become a film critic? Okay, uh, there are uh, four film critics in this panel today, <laughs> so I would like to push the question to other three. Maybe uh, Megasandra Kumbam or Bitukon can reply. Who will you like? Sure. What are the qualities needed to become a film critic? Yeah. Simple question. Last question it is. Yeah, yeah. To become a film critic, uh, we need to study just the history of the uh, world cinema and uh, the cinema of other countries and Indian cinema. We have to know all these things and we have to know the language of the films. The language of the film is told. Okay. Very uh, simple and straight answer. And how one wants to say something? Yeah. Just, just for fun, I think you have to be a bad human being. Yeah, also. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bad human being to be a good film critic, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So here we have crossed uh, twenty minutes, more than two hours. Uh, so uh, we have to close today's webinar. Yes. Enough. It is commented enough by Manju Bora, the veteran filmmaker. <laughs> <Enough. means> over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is over now. So we had a fruitful and good discussion. I, I hope everybody has uh, got uh, their point. Uh, their, um, uh, their, they have been benefited and listeners and participants also. I hope they have enjoyed the whole session. I thank everybody else, the panelists, the five panelists with me. And, uh, and also I have to be very thankful to uh, Pramendra Mojunda, who is the main person behind uh, organizing this webinar with the Secretary of FSC India. And also the technical hand behind this whole effort is a Debayan um, Lahoti or Lahiri. I forgot his title anyway, Debayan. Badri, Badri. You also? Badri, yes, Debayan Badri. Yeah. So here, here we end up our program today. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank